it's Eva-san, and this is my 2020 Mark 8 Fiesta ST, my new daily driver, and so far I'm absolutely loving it. So why did I buy the Mark 8 Fiesta ST? To give you a bit of background, I used to own an Evo 7. I had it for quite a long time actually. It was super fun to drive, super raw, but I was only driving it on the weekends and thought it was time to move on so I can try something newer and at the same time serve as my daily driver. So I was in the market for something manual, something with good handling, needed to be practical and usable as a daily. And of course it had to look good. And I think the Fiesta ticked all those boxes for me. Now in that time I did look at a few other cars. The i20N, the i30N, uh, Polo GTI, Golf GTI. But none of them ticked all the boxes that I wanted. The only one that probably came close was the i20N. But I didn't really like the way it looked. It was a bit too out there and I didn't really like the interior to be honest. So let me run through some of the things that sold me on the Fiesta. First up, the looks. I think Ford did a wonderful job. The front end is quite aggressive, you've got sharp headlights, the famous ST badge on the grille, and I like how the lower one exposes the intercooler. Moving on to the side profile, I have to say I really love these wheels. They have a unique shape to it and look really nice on the road. The brake calipers are also painted red, which is a nice touch. Although the rotors themselves are quite small, even for a small car, I think in the future I might upgrade those. Now I know the rear of the car is a little less aggressive than the front, but you still do get a nice roof spoiler. Uh, there's a rear diffuser down the bottom, and next to that diffuser you've got your twin tip bimodal exhaust, that sounds amazing, and does nice pops and bangs when you're shifting. Have a listen. So let's talk about the performance real quick. It's a 1.5 litre 3 cylinder turbocharged engine, it makes about 147 kilowatts of power and around 290 Nm of torque and runs through a 6 speed gearbox. The engine itself has a nice throaty note to it and you also get a bit of intake and blow off noise as well. Now Ford says it can do 0 to 100 in about 6.5 seconds, but the closest I've ever got was around 6.9 seconds. That's mainly probably because of my shifts and also the tyres that are on there at the moment. Now normally these cars come with PS4s when new, but when I got the car it had Yokohama Advans up front and PS4s in the back. So I'll probably be changing the tyres pretty soon. I really want to get the PS5s. Hopefully that improves the grip quite a bit. Speaking of grip, in the brief time I've had it, it's been amazing around corners. The front Quaif LSD is great, you just chuck it into a corner, put your foot hard down and there's barely any understeer. Now, moving on to the interior. The first thing you notice before even getting into the car is these pop out door protectors. They're on all four corners and have been proven so handy to have. So once you're inside, the first thing you notice are these nice Recaro seats. They've got quite a bit of manual adjustment, they're super supportive around corners and have nice cushioning. They're also heated as well. When you pair those seats and this nice flat bottom steering wheel, you've got a really nice driving position. One thing I forgot to mention is, along with the seats, the steering wheel and the windshield are also heated as well. I doubt I'll ever use it, but they're quite good to have. The infotainment has been quite good so far. It runs Sync 3, paired with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and the 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen system. This has to be one of my favorite features. There are a few bits of fake carbon fiber around the cabin, 
and I think it really adds to the character of this car. Nestled in between that fake carbon trim, you've got a really nice shifter. It feels a little weighted, and the shifts themselves are quite short. I'll be honest, I've only sat in the back seat once or twice. It can definitely fit two adults, but three is a stretch, and could definitely do with a bit of legroom. The center console is a decent size. You also get one USB outlet inside. The boot's just over 300 liters. I think that's a pretty decent size. Some other features I may have missed uh, include autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, which works at low and high speed, rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, lane keep assist, keyless entry with push button start, and most importantly, launch control. So at the moment, the only thing I've done for this car is ceramic paint protection. The plan is to incrementally modify it slightly, starting with the tires and possibly upgrading the brake pads and rotors. I'll be taking it to track later this year and we'll see how it goes. I'm still getting used to it so probably won't find its limits but I might be able to see where I can make improvements. As for now, I'm just really enjoying driving it.